A predatory fish might be just what you need in your aquarium. Now, what do we mean by predatory fish? Technically, a predator is anything that preys on another living thing, not including plants. But a predatory fish can be all fish. Even Kitster, my Farlowell of Atata, primarily a vegetarian, will eat protein-based foods if they're small enough and if they can't get away. A good size for a fish that we'll use for um, something that could be eaten by a predator might be a neon tetra or uh, a zebra danio, very common fish at the local fish store. So therefore anything that could eat a neon tetra or a zebra danio is a predator fish, at least as far as the aquarium hobby goes. Now there may be some exceptions to this rule, as some fish will prey on shrimp and snails, even though they're the same size as the zebra danio or the neon tetra, they won't go after the neon tetra or the zebra danio. It seems that some fish, although they don't go after other fish, they're predisposed to eat crustaceans. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna only focus on neon tetra and zebra danio eating fish. It should also be noted that just because it's a predatory fish does not mean that it's an aggressive fish. For example, the electric blue acara is quite docile when it's out of breeding season and yet it's still been known to eat neon tetras. This is why I have an electric blue acara in my tank, and this is why I'm recommending that you guys could keep predatory fish in your tank. So, why? Well, now that we know that not all predatory fish are aggressive, there's some that we can keep with other fish, just so long as we meet one demand. This one demand or requirement is that we don't put any fish with our predator that is small enough to fit in its mouth. But you really want to put your electric blue acara with your rummy nose tetras. So how are you gonna do it? Well, there is one little known method that you could try and that is raising them both together. In raising your predator with the prey, you may be creating a dependence from the predator towards the prey so that the prey can hide the predator in its young state within the school. This is especially true and might work even better if the predator looks like one of the prey when it's young. The downside of this is, well, it might not work altogether. And if some of the prey fish, some of those smaller schooling fish die off and you want to replace them, you can't. And the reason behind this is, although they look similar, the predator recognizes them as different and as food. Despite my research, this is still a risky course of action. The predator may not even accept the fish that it's with as friends and go after them as soon as it's big enough. So why would you even attempt this? For the answer, let's head over to a very popular YouTuber, the King of DIY. Now in a recent video, at least for me, the King of DIY posted his shell dweller tank and how he has frontosa with them. If you're unaware, the frontosa is this massive zebra patterned fish, much bigger than the Maltese that he's keeping it with. Although both predators, the frontosa is much bigger and so it has a much bigger mouth able to consume much bigger prey, including the multifasciatus. The multifasciatus, on the other hand, are a much smaller shell-dwelling fish that are something like we discussed at the beginning of this video. They are predators and yet they don't eat other fish per se. More so they go after shrimp and other crustaceans. So why put such big predatory fish in a tank with such small fish. Is this another YouTuber trying to get free views off of animal abuse? Well, as the King of DIY explains, no. You see, in the wild, the multifasciatus shell dweller would have predators. And while this doesn't justify putting it in an aquarium with predators, it does show that they have some resilience against them. You'll notice later in the video as you watch, the shell dwellers have developed defensive and offensive measures to combat these frontosa, these very big predatory fish, and extend their lineage. You see, while the shell dwellers used to be living all over the tank, now that they've noticed there are predators in the tank, they stay at the bottom. The fry also stay within the shell, signaled by the parents when it's safe to come out and get food, and when they have to stay back at home. Sometimes the fry don't come out at all, and the parents bring them food by catching it in their mouths and spitting it out into the shell. Another interesting behavior in protecting their fry is they will position the shell 
and the surroundings so that the current will automatically bring food to the fry. So this is sort of the summary of defensive measures that the shell dwellers will take to defend their fry. But sometimes they also go on the offensive. Just like in many fish species, one male will be elected as the dominant. And although this gives him privileges to breed with the females and the first to get the food, it also means that he is first line in attacking any nearby predators. Once again, you can see in the King's video that his frontosa are actually attacked by these much smaller shell dweller males. And so it is not the size that counts, but the ferocity in the attacks. This is something to take into account when picking smaller fish to go with your predator fish. For instance, a rummy nosed tetra and a young tiger barb are the same size, but the tiger barb is much more aggressive and defensive in keeping itself alive when in the presence of a predatory fish. You'd be much better off keeping a tiger barb with a parrot cichlid than to keep a rummy nose with a parrot cichlid. Of course, this also brings us into the idea of how big is your small fish. The bigger the fish, the less likely it is to be attacked by your predator. However, if your predatory fish is both aggressive and predatory, it'll be much harder to find another fish that can go with it. Even if your rainbow fish is eight inches long and four inches tall, your Oscar will still be interested in killing it if just to get it out of its territory. So why go through all this time and energy doing research, trying to find the right combination for your predatory fish? Well, the first reason is because you're a nerd and you're gonna be doing the research anyway. The second reason is it adds a different dimension to the behaviors in your aquarium. So what am I trying to say by this? Well, when you add a predatory fish, it helps you get rid of pests, too many fry, too many shrimp, too many snails. But it also changes the behavior of the fish in there, the fish that they're not eating. For instance, in the King of DIY's video, there was a new interaction between the frontosa and the shell dwellers. Those defensive and offensive behaviors suddenly came out of the shell dwellers, making the tank more interesting. In my 40 gallon community aquarium, there's almost an opposite effect. Instead of the rainbow fish becoming more timid, more defensive, they become more assertive. It could be because that the electric blue acara, unlike the frontosa in the King of DIY's case, is much more similar looking, especially in size, to the rainbow fish that I have. Perhaps it is this possible camaraderie that is making both the acara and the rainbow fish more assertive in the aquarium. Another possibility is that the electric blue acara, the predator, has taken over their hiding spots on the bottom level of the aquarium, thus making them need to stay in the mid-level. It is also the presence of a predator that for schooling fish makes them school tighter. This gives the desired effect in the aquarium of having your schooling fish as one motion through the tank, as one unified color in many different parts. And this look is made even better when amongst this school of same colored fish, there is one fish slightly different, slightly bigger, that breaks through the center of them. And so not only is predatory fish good for changing behavior in the aquarium, it's also good for changing the appearance of the aquarium as your centerpiece. So what kind of predatory fish would you put in your aquarium? Would it be big or would it be small? Would it be territorial or would it be peaceful? What kind of fish would you put with it? Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next Sunday. by predatory fish. Cool. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. No idea. You can't even see this. What's this video about? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> we need this much? Wow. <laughs> this is... Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Multi... Multi... Ah. Cichlid from, uh, if you're unaware, the, uh, the, uh, the frontosa is this massive zebra shaped. <laughs> zebra shaped. Ah! Multifossiatus. Multifossiatus. <laughs> Excuse me, had to get that out of my system. Ooh, that's green apple for you. Wow. It does show that there are coping mechanisms. Coping mechanisms. 
Interesting, are we dealing with stress? First of all, where, wow, that car was going fast. Two meters. <laughs> You're weird. You are weird. Go to weird jail at the hands of many ammonia spikes. <laughs>